Hey y'all. So I'm back for the first episode of season six of Love and Marriage Hunts Bill. A hope and a prayer. Y'all, please be sure to click that subscribe button um, and be sure to like the video, especially as I try to grow my channel. I continue to try to grow it. So please make sure you're hitting subscribe so you can get notifications for new videos. Okay. So we start. <laughs> Let me tell you, so this is a good episode. This is a good one. Because I just kept thinking to myself, where else are they going to go with it? But then I was like, okay, let me try. So Mel and Kimmy, it starts with them. They meet up. And Mel says, you know, Kimmy's kind of asking her about her dating life, where she's been. They was out of the country who, with who. And Mel was just like, I'm purposely being coy about it, about what I did for my birthday and who I was with. She was like, because that's my personal business. And see, I can deal with that. You want to know why? Because Mel gives us enough on camera. She not pulling the destiny where we don't know shit about her life, okay? She gives us enough that she can keep some stuff private. All right, so Maurice has an attitude, okay? Because Kimmy keeps running and still trying to, you know, do a lot. And she has two more rounds of chemotherapy or two more rounds of other things to do, uh, should I say. Um, and she has surgery and I think she's gonna have radiation. Um, but Kimmy was basically telling Mel, like, I feel like getting through chemo is a milestone. And she was like, I want to have a party. And Mel was like, it is a milestone. Girl, I plan a party. And Maurice, even in the confessional, was like, well, we're only a third of the way through. And I get what Maurice is saying. I just don't think he should have said it out loud. Period. Ever. To Kimmy. Ever. To anybody. Ever. Um, because that makes her feel insecure. And quite frankly, yes, you're not through the whole process of completely getting rid of cancer and going through the entire surgery and restoring her breasts and that kind of thing. But the bottom line is when somebody, and I know, I know this on a very personal level, I certainly know what it is as I deal with my mother as she's going through breast cancer. You don't sit there and discourage the person who was enduring that. You do what they ask you to do if it is within reason. And certainly she wants a party and you know that life is tough right now, then you fucking give her one and shut the fuck up. And you wear that pink and you be worried internally and go talk to your brothers or something off camera or to a therapist, but you don't do that. And Kimmy, I honestly, I understand your stress got to be managed, but you shouldn't put up with that. Anyway, so Mel, um, basically just was like, what kind of party do you want? And I'll plan it. Kimmy said, everybody would be on the list. And so she said, I just want to let you know that if that's going to be the case. And Mel said, well, look, if it was up to me, there'd be a lot of people not on the list, but it's not my party. So girl, don't worry. I'll plan it. All right. So then they show Martel. Martel. <laughs> I have so many thoughts about Martel. I'm trying to keep it together. Martel is getting a facial. And he was like, I like anything where, you know, women are touching me, massages, a mask. And I was like, you were kind of a freak. And I don't know, that's the kind of thing you're in the Me Too movement you should be saying out loud. But what got me is after they showed that part in the confessional, she was like, okay, well, let's try this LED mask. <laughs> where basically she ain't touching him at all. All right. Because he's trying to work on hyperpigmentation, clearing his skin out. Something about Martel. It's always been a little sus to me. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, he he gets a call from Sheree. Sheree, Real Housewives of Atlanta, Sheree. Okay, and she's calling from Portugal. She's on a girl's trip, whatever. And Martel says, uh, basically in the confessional, um, him and Sheree, they talk every day. He was like, we're really good friends. And all I could think was, and his mom also comes in. And she goes, what you doing? He was like, I ain't doing nothing. I'm by myself. I'm Look, I'm here with my mama. I ain't doing nothing. And I was like, yeah, I guess you got to prove that seeing your reputation, boo-boo. But anyway, and all I could think, though, was as he talks about Sheree and Sheree being seen on camera with him and going to be seen on camera with him this season, is that side chick must be mad as hell because he never claims her on TV. Like, he's still chasing after Mel, okay, who he would not have gotten a divorce from if Mel had not gotten a divorce from him. She divorced him. He didn't divorce her. Okay. Um, and so his mama, she's there talking about some, she ain't in her sixties or whatever. Okay, girl. 
Um, so his mama asks about Mel and how she's doing and talks about, you know, how beautiful it was when they were together. I'm sure she does miss Mel. But the way you come off missing Mel is the same way Martel does. Y'all don't know how to deal with y'all's emotions, okay? So I can understand why Mel is just over y'all's bullshit. So they play that scene from last season um, where Carlos was basically telling Martel, like, I just don't understand why you are so afraid to say that you miss your family. You made a mistake. And that you're still in love with Mel. You can't even say that. So apparently Mel and Martell went to their kids Christmas program like they do. Okay. I think they are both supportive of their kids. I, I think they both have the intention to be great parents. I think Mel is a great parent. I do think that the way Martell talks about Mel negatively every chance he gets. That to me does not make him a good father. And I, we have this tendency in our community that when... It's a black man. We like to always try to clean up their behavior and say, but he's a good father. And it's by the most ridiculous, bare minimum fucking standards. And no, I don't think that makes you a good father. I don't. I think y'all's kids are great. Somebody, somebody, y'all are doing something right. Don't get me wrong. But Martel, I'm gonna have to hold back on that. Anyway, so Martel said he's gonna start going to therapy. His broke ass looking mama sat on that motherfucking television and said, why are you going to therapy? What's wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong with you. He said, well, to become a better person. She said, how much better? I said, bitch, your son cheated perpetually on his beautiful wife, okay? No argument there. Who had four, four of his children, beautiful, polite, healthy children, still walking around thin, beautiful, hardworking, and she was clearly the provider because we see how broke this motherfucker is now that he ain't got it, okay? And we know he was broke after their marriage because we saw him struggling and how he keeps trying to take Mel's kids away because he's really looking for child support shit. Sorry, bastard. And what kind of man does that fuck shit? I'll tell you who, a bitch-ass motherfucker. You need to worry about why you have that cigarette face, ma'am. Okay, and look inside yourself, okay, where you have to acknowledge where the fuck you went wrong with why Martel is the sorry ass motherfucking man he is. That's what makes me really think that's why you're afraid for him to go to therapy, why you're afraid, okay, to say anything nice about Mel and acknowledge that he did something wrong because you're afraid it's going to expose you. Okay, but you need to go ahead and deal with that internally, okay? You ain't too old to deal with that. Anyway, um... So Martell is finally taking a step in the right direction. We just got to say step because we all know Martell, okay? How he will just regress. So this bitch says, she needs to take, the, take that bitterness out of you and stop talking bad about their daddy to their kids. At first, I just thought he was, she was talking to her son. Like, take that bitterness out of you. She had nerve to be talking about Mel. Tell her to, daddy to quit going on Instagram Live. Dogging their mother out, taking her to court, and chatting it up with his forever side chick. Because you know she's going to forever be the side chick. These kids, like these kids don't know how to get on the internet and see this shit. Girl, bye. Anyway, so Stormy and her husband, I think his name is Charlie or Chess or the baby's name is Chess. I don't know what his name is. Anyway, so Stormy, you are funny looking and your husband is weird looking. Okay. And let me just get that out the way. Your lip touching your nose ain't going to... Child. So he's, she always looks like she smells something bad. Like, I just can't, I can't. So he starts talking about how Stormy needs to stop breastfeeding their toddler. Hashtag agreed, sir. You are absolutely right. Okay, he was like, if the, I understand that breastfeeding is good for the baby. But if the baby is eating table food, they don't need to be breastfed. Yes! I think it is unhealthy when people are still breastfeeding their child. I'm sorry, I think a year is too long. I just think that something about that seems strange to me. And so she was like, well, I want to breastfeed all our kids. And her husband makes it clear in, in no uncertain language that he doesn't want any more kids. Then he says, you lost a lot of blood. You almost died last time. He said he doesn't want any more kids. Clearly. He said that clearly. She was like, well, we could have a surrogate. He said, no, I don't want any more kids. I'm good on it. He said, I don't want anybody else carrying my baby. I don't want our son competing with another child for attention. And she was like, well, you all over the place. And he told her, she was like, so what's your reason? What's your reason? And he was like, I don't have to give you a reason. I'm done talking about it. And honestly, I would be too. And I'm going to tell you why. I don't think this is the first time they done had this conversation. Okay. I think you're doing that for the cameras. And that's the fuck why he shut down. I don't think it's no just fucked up emotional shit. 
we've seen him on a previous season where he talking to the other fellas and shit about different stuff. No, he not playing it up for these cameras and he not here for it, okay? So then we get this scene with Mel and those four beautiful children. They have some beautiful children. They're sweet. They're polite. Just nice kids. I really j just, you know, sometimes God will give you just diamonds all around coal. And that's what he gave her with them children. So she's asking them what they want for Christmas. They're talking about how they want a phone. And that was like a phone. I don't know where y'all got that from. And somebody was like, well, daddy said he thinks I'm responsible for a phone. And then the son, the son tried to clean it up, though. I got to give it to him. He tried to clean it up. He was like, no, 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 just, just one phone for all of us, like, to share or whatever. And I, I come from a family of five. We are all two years apart. And that was the kind of shit we would do. <laughs> when we wanted something, we felt like our parents wouldn't give us. We tried to prove, like, oh, no, we'll share it. We'll share it because, you know, it's hard for siblings to share sometimes. Um, and I don't know why that was funny to me, and that brought back memories. But anyway, so Mel has to call, Mel sends them upstairs, and she says she has to call people for Kimmy's party. So she calls, um, Tiffany or whatever, and that went fine. But she said, I'm calling for my track phone. <laughs> I said, oh, not the track phone, that's the Walmart phone. Her burner phone, basically. So that they, um, don't have her number, because she don't feel like dealing with that foolishness. So, I, I guess basically, because you know how on reality shows, they make you put the people on speaker. I guess Mel said, look. If they can't call me, I ain't got to have them wack ass conversations. I ain't mad. So she calls Letitia. She's telling her about Kimmy's party. Letitia, ma'am, that confessional look, you need a stronger bra and a shirt underneath that blazer. I don't know what this is. And Tisha, you're not the only one, but this happens perpetually in reality shows and I'm uncomfortable with it. And women who are on here and they wear blazers, but their breasts are out. And some people will be like, I don't think nothing's wrong with that. That is not the look. It gives off a very unprofessional vibe. And if you want to be sexy, then wear, then wear like a dress. It's something about that blazer thing that just looks, it looks tacky to me to have on a professional blazer. That's very nice. And not have on some kind of tank or something. I, I'm not here for it. So she calls, okay, so anyway, she calls Tisha, invites her. She calls Stormy, and Stormy's like, who's this? Huh? Who is this? What number is this? She is so ghetto. The idea that she is a business owner, or even the fact that she's a business owner, I just nothing about, like, if she was not in Huntsville, Alabama, I do not see her having an ounce of success in life. So, girl, stay your country dumbass there. So Mel called Martel to invite him. Martel asked if she prayed about them talking to each other. Mel said, uh-huh. And then they show her in the confessional. She was like, I prayed on a lot of things. And that wasn't one of them. God been said go. Yes, Mel. Don't look back. <laughs> Mel keeps talking about how she go pray on it. And my thing is like, Martel, you can't be serious. Did you really think she meant that shit? Like, you are really playing this up? Like, why are you so obsessed with her? You was fucking this other bitch and other bitches. And you on the phone with Sheree. You are so insecure. There is something about you that just cannot be quenched and you need to deal with it. Okay, but it is clear Mel is the one that got away. I'm glad she got away. But don't think you're going to find that twice in life unless you do some serious repentance. And I just think that's hard for you. Then we get Stormy again. Stormy who always looks like she's smelling something stank. That shit is not cute. She is funny looking as hell. Um, who wants to front and pretend like Mel didn't put her ass on this show, okay? So y'all gonna have to find a new recipe for this show. Um, because the talk shit about Mel, gang up on her after she helps you out by giving you a platform is really getting old. And I'm not sitting up here saying Mel is perfect, okay, because none of us are. So whatever. But that reunion last season was very telling. And the part that was telling was the fact that Mel talked barely talk for two of those three episodes and that shit was dull as fuck okay it was dull because mel refused to respond or talk to people who had been ganging up on her she just wouldn't say anything and that shit was dull when she opened her fucking mouth most of the time to martell but when she opened her mouth was when it got good so don't tell me that this show can function without her like oh all these people can go and hang and it's any other no that's why they keep up the same recipe they know they ain't shit so, Stormy, your mama is where you get that country-ass ghetto shit from. And it's clear. 
I don't care how much money Stormy makes. I don't care how many businesses she has. That bitch is a country ghetto rat. And yes, I can say that I'm from the deep South. Okay. I'm from Georgia. I'm from Atlanta. Anybody ever taken a drive from New York to Georgia? Trust me. You'll get to North Carolina and be like, damn, we ain't there yet. Yes. I'm from the deep South. I know what the fuck I'm talking about and what the fuck I'm looking at. And her mama looks evil as hell. And let me tell you something. She the kind, some, something about her just gives me, she the kind that go to church on the first and third Sundays. Don't tithe. Don't give no offering. And then want to keep up all kinds of sh mess down to the church. And asking where the money at when she don't contribute, where the money actually go to. And and anybody who know anything about church that don't have nothing to do with a mega church. And most people don't seem to understand how church works. Every time you go back to that church and them churches lights on, that's where that money go. Every time there's water in that water fountain for them kids, that's where that money go. Every time somebody needs some, some kind of bill paid and that's where it go. And it don't go in the preacher's pocket like that. It don't. And at the end of the day, it's a it's a job to be a pastor. And that person has a life and a family most of the time too. Okay. But she give me that vibe anyway. So Stormy tells her mom that her husband doesn't want to have any more kids. And the mom was like, why? Okay. Her mom said that, well, men's have trouble talking about those things. And she was for real. Freedman's Bureau. Come help this grammar problem. Please come to somebody. Please give that federal agency from reconstruction. Okay. Some more money to reboot and move down to Alabama to teach these motherfuckers how to talk and read. Okay. Cause we have seen with Wanda, we have seen now with whoever that, whatever the hell her name is, whatever the fuck her name is, Betty Boot, whatever the hell her name is. She can't talk neither. Okay. So I'm just like, and y'all can look up the Freedmen's Bureau to find out what the fuck it is. Okay, anyway. So Stormy seems to be keeping the problem going about him not wanting the kids. Why are you talking to your mama and not to him? And you still talking about it on camera? Anyway. Uh, and honestly, I'm sitting up there listening like, you talk to your mama too much about shit. Because your mama seem like she messy as fuck. Before I can finish the thought, Stormy says that growing up, her mom didn't like any of her friends. None of them. So it tells me that one, I think that's strange. I think that's more a reflection of your mother to have a problem with so many children and people that you came into contact with. Three, I damn sure don't hope it's because she think that you were better than all them other fucking kids. Because trust me, you weren't. I can tell you that right now. Four, for an adult not to like any of their child's friends just seems very strange to me and also seems to be a reflection on your daughter's choices so i want to know what kind of mother you were okay and i can already tell you what kind of rat shit her mom was probably into so she was like the difference is now there's an internet she said her mother used to be an avid reader that her mother used to be in bed reading every night What was she reading, Stormy? Because I know this is back when Jed and Hyper and Sister to Sister were in print. Um, was she reading or was she looking at pictures? Because the way your mama talks, your mama wasn't no avid reader, honey. Mm-mm. 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 Uh-uh. 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 Okay? Cut it the fuck out. And we not just talking about dialect no more. Okay. I'm talking about ignorant shit. I can tell your mama would never know ever read a girl. Please. I don't believe that. That grandma is terrible. And the ignorance is awful. Hello and good morning. And talking about her mother on the internet, the mother asked if Stormy and Mel are friends. And Stormy was like, why would you ask me? I was like, bitch, because you probably prompted her before these cameras got here. Anyway, so she said she doesn't know um, where they are in terms of their friendship. They didn't really talk at the reunion. Well, bitch, you was on stage for six minutes crying about how people was teasing you about your accent or whatever, which I kind of felt for you for, but Stormy, I don't like you, so I'm just, I'm, I'm, just fuck you. All right, so why is her mom so involved with her daughter's adult friendships? Don't that just seem weird? Just like her not liking any kids she hung around. That's weird to me. That just, 
an adult acting like that towards you? Get the fuck out of here. So she said the first time she met her, her mama started talking. The first time I met Mel at your house, she had bad energy. Okay, ma'am. Then get off the platform, Mel Bill, and stay away from her energy. You don't have to interact with her. Let Stormy build her own show. Oh, right. Okay, nobody picked it up. Got it. Anyway, so Kimmy and Maurice. Mel did Kimmy's party celebrating the end of her chemo. Maurice is a hater. And honestly, Maurice, it's it's not a good look to not be supportive of your wife. Because when Mel was like, I'm just glad, Maurice, that you didn't cancel it. And he was like, first of all, he's telling Kimmy and the confessional, it's not a party. It's a get together. And I'm like, why the, f your wife is battling cancer. I realize that the rounds aren't done, motherfucker. But if anything happens to her, I would certainly think you would want some good memories. God forbid anything happened to her. That you would want some memories of that. You getting on my fucking nerves with that shit. Okay, Mel did a good job with the party. It was very nice, very, you know, nice and tasteful uh, in terms of the decor. Now, the invitee list was another story. All right, so everybody starts showing up, including Martel. Okay, Martel says it was the first time him and Melly had been around each other and their friends at the same time. Martel is one of the people who lies a lot. And so sometimes he makes things sound a certain way. So, like, this person, you just told us she was around Mel, and then, and then he tries to, like, do things like clean it up, like, and our friends. Like, Negro, okay. So, Marceau and Tisha show up. Tisha looks like she threw on a pink cotton scarf at the bottom of the class, like, oh, I need something pink. I don't have nothing pink. I don't have nothing pink. I ain't gonna go out and buy nothing, no. I don't feel like doing that. So, she found something at the bottom and twirled it around on a red outfit. Like, not a black outfit, so the pink pop. Not a white outfit, so the pink pop. And, you know, it's Alabama. It ain't like it get cold, cold. Um... Like, pink and red, even on Valentine's Day, to me, is always tacky. Um, but at least on Valentine's Day, is understandable. Ma'am, don't do that again. So, Stormy is coming and saying that everybody is acting fake. Like, I don't do that fake shit. Like, they act like we always hang out. And I was like, yeah, because all y'all don't. You not in a comeback group. <laughs> you, ain't, you ain't been here for seasons. Yeah, I bet you don't. That means you ain't in a note. See, you told on yourself. Anyway, so then Martell... Uh, Starts asking Mel about her prayer in the middle of Kimmy's party. And Mel says, see, that's typical Martell. We celebrating Kimmy and he gonna make it about him. Then she says, honestly, I just agreed to do that to appease him. She said, I was not about to waste the Lord's <laughs> First of all, Martell, why, why did you even take that that seriously? Even when people say they gonna pray for you. Shit, that's a toss up. What are people going to actually come through? Did you pray? Did you pray? Like, oh, did God, is God on my side? Did he make you do something? You Like, ne Negro, cut it out. Like, cut it. Okay? Your price is too high. Cut it. Okay. And Mel was like, oh, the Lord has been delivering me out of that lion's den. I know that's right, Mel. You go on about your life. But this season is looking like it's going to be given. So we're going to be talking about it soon. But happy Easter. Like I said, I won't be recording tomorrow. But uh, have a wonderful Easter with your family or whatever you do. Um, God bless you all.